I'm Claudia Catania, and you're listening to Playing On Air. Hey there, listeners. If you're joining us every week, you might notice a bit of audio variation this season. Some episodes were recorded in studio before quarantine, and some were recorded, well, a bit closer to home. At home. So fair warning, you may notice variable audio quality and whatnot on this episode. Let's just call it immersive theater. And away we go. So this week, I imagine that some of you who celebrate Thanksgiving might be feeling a little less tryptophan than usual. Of course, sharing the big meal over Zoom or FaceTime did have upsides. Members of our staff report finally learning their family's recipes for pumpkin cheesecake and green bean casserole. And they report much less pressure to watch football. But you know, it was also a little strange. So that's why we're bringing you a heaping double serving of holiday plays this year. Last week's world premiere, Thanksgiving for One, and also this week's The Thompsons. And if you're missing the special dance of both humoring and celebrating your in-laws, then have we got an episode for you. You are about to hear The Thompsons by Andrew Massey, directed by Aaron Arbus. They're joined by an ensemble of Playing on Air's frequent and stellar collaborators, William Jackson Harper, Sue Jean Kim, April Mathis, and Amy Ryan. And now, the Thompsons. It's Thanksgiving. Tess, Danny, and Gordon sit around a kitchen table. They are a soon-to-be daughter-in-law, a daughter-in-law, and a son-in-law of Teresa and Troy Thompson. They all have wine in hand and are watching something intently for a few seconds when Rachel... Yet another daughter-in-law enters. Have they started? I didn't miss it, right? No, no, you're fine. They're still, um... They're stretching. Oh, okay, cool. (laughs) Good. Here we go. Yep. There it is. The Thompson turkey trot. They are really going for it this year. Yeah, a lot of neck action in the turkey part. Good commitment. Ooh, oh, never mind. Oh. Mom recovered on the spin. Almost had a real catastrophe. Hey, where are my kids? They're upstairs watching Finding Dory. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. You ever have a moment where you just forget for a second that you have kids, and then you remember, and you're like, oh, holy crap, did I leave them somewhere? I don't have... Yeah, no, never. Oh, okay, yeah, I mean, not really me either. Okay, Gordon. Do you think it's weird that we're not invited to be in the dance with them? I mean, we're not not invited. What are you talking about? We are absolutely not invited. They've never, like, directly said we can't be part of it. But they've also never once invited any of us to do it with them. Do you want to do the turkey trot? I'd like to be asked. Me too. Or I'd like them to at least seem like they notice that they're abandoning the people they claim to love over here in the corner. Maybe there's an explanation. Gordon. You've been in the family the longest. When was your first Thanksgiving with them? Um, 11 or 12 or 15? 15 years ago? Do you remember if they said anything about you joining the dance? Um... See, Tess? What an answer! No, no, wait, they asked me. Huh. They asked me, and they tried to teach me the steps, but I kept messing up because I was nervous, and then Tyler said it was okay and said I could just watch, and so since then I've just... watched. Huh. So you ruined it for all of us, Gordon. Hey! (laughs) Uh, yeah, I guess so. Uh, does anyone want more wine? I wa- Oh. He's gone. Does Gordon seem off to anyone? He pretty much just seems like Gordon. Look, they've moved on to the solos. I don't think I'd even want to be a part of it. The dance. Why not? I don't know, it's just kind of, you know- really freaking weird. It's really a freaking weird thing to do as a human with your family. It's not that weird. No, it is. It really is weird. Just look at it. And I know all families are weird in their own little ways. They all have their own little eccentricities or traditions or stuff, but this... I mean, 
My family does this thing at Thanksgiving where we hide a small plastic figurine of a rabbit in the potatoes, and whoever gets it gets to choose what movie we watch together at night. And to me, that seems really aggressively normal. But my girlfriend before I met Tatiana came to Thanksgiving, and she broke a tooth on the rabbit, and we had to go to an emergency dentist. So that's weird, I guess. But this feels weirder to me. I still want to do it. Um, I couldn't remember who won it one, so I got a couple. This will save us a trip. Um, thanks, Gordon. How's wedding planning, Tess? Oh, it's good. That's good. I remember it as being fun, but when I really think about it, I remember Tatiana and I were almost in tears for a lot of it. Yeah, no, yeah, it's fine. It's fun. I'm pregnant, but yeah, the planning is going well. We're thinking about getting food trucks to cater instead of a normal cater, and, you know, we could get a couple options that way. Weirdly, it doesn't cost much more. What? Food trucks. What, Tess? Like a pizza truck that makes fancy little pizzas. Pregnant! What? Oh, yeah? Yeah. How long? Um, ten... Yeah, ten weeks. Oh, congratulations! (laughs) Yay! Thanks, thanks, guys. But, um, like, no one knows. Just me and Tyler and, like, our doctors. So don't tell anyone or make a big deal about it, please. Are you waiting because of mom? Mom? Teresa? Yeah. Oh, no. Well, I was waiting because of Teresa because, you know, she probably wouldn't love the idea of a pregnant bride. But, you know, do bad. That's what she's getting. I really just wanted to tell people and, like, in um, a special way. And I can't decide how that special way is going to work, what that's going to be. So I figured I'd just try, you know, just saying it and see how it goes. I think it worked. Good, good. That's good. Why do you do that? Me? No, Rachel. Do what? Call Teresa mom. Oh, I don't know. I guess I just thought that's what I was supposed to do. Like... I thought that's what people were supposed to do. Did you just start doing it? No, I asked. You just asked? Yeah, I just asked her if she wanted me to or, you know, if she minded. And she said she would love it if I did. Why do you want to? It feels right, you know? No. Well, it feels right to me. Okay. I feel like my relationship with my mom is so messed up that it, like, precludes me ever calling another person mom. Her kids wanted to name the cat mom, but we got them to change their minds. I don't know. Maybe the name is more aspirational than anything. Maybe I just want her to feel like someone I would be able to call mom, but no, I don't know. I love her. Oh, me too. Of course I do. And I feel like I could call her if something was wrong. And I feel like I would want to share something funny that happened to me with her. And I feel like she thinks about me even when we haven't spoken. And things remind me of her in my day. And yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like, yeah, I feel like that's enough. Yeah, I still think it'd feel too weird for me. And that's fine. I'd feel weird calling Troy dad. More one? I've always wanted to ask one of you this, so I might as well now, since all of you are here. What? Well, actually not you, Tess, because you haven't had the wedding yet. That's fine. But did any of you have a moment right before the ceremony or maybe in the days leading up to it with all the things, you know, that come before where you just, like, stepped back, like... Took yourself aside for a moment and stepped way, way back and thought, this family, this one I'm joining, is it too weird? Like, I love the person I love and I can't imagine a life without them, but in the context of the people who they're related to, are they too weird? Like, there was a moment I was standing about to walk down the aisle, looking at Tatiana under that little archway we made out of birch branches. Oh, I love that archway. And I saw all of you with all of them lined up with their T names, Tyla, Tim, Tyler, and Tatiana waiting for me. And I thought, 
I am choosing to let the course of my life be altered by these weirdos. I almost ran. I started to. I tripped. Then I stopped and realized I was ready for it. Did that happen to anyone else or at least anything like it? Yep. Not yet. I was staying at the front, but yes. Oh, okay. Okay, good. I need to tell you all something. What's up? I don't know how to say it, but maybe it's obvious or it's been obvious or yeah, I don't know. What? Tyla and I are getting a divorce. <gasps> oh, wow. I'm, oh, we're so sorry. No, no, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, yeah, it's not been great, but it's not like anyone cheated on each other or, I don't know, committed some crime. It's just not working, and it's just not been working, and it just doesn't work. I'm sorry. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I'm, uh, we're not telling anyone until after Christmas. We, um, we wanted the kids to have it normal, at least through the holidays, so, um... Yeah, don't tell anyone. I shouldn't be saying anything, but I wanted to because, yeah, because I won't see you at Christmas because we don't do those together and because, uh, yeah, this is probably the last time I'll ever see any of you. I'm sure we'll... Yeah, I'm, I mean, yeah, um, we, we might see each other sometime at, I don't know, a high school graduation, but not at these, and we don't live near any of you, so not around town or like running into each other at a restaurant or anything. And the kids are both under five. So it's not like they're graduating anytime soon. And yeah. So yeah. So yeah, I'll miss you all. I love you all. And I hope you're all happy or as happy as you can be as much as possible. Thanks, Gordon. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Gordon. Yeah, no worries, no worries. You know? What? I think we've all seen the turkey trot enough to, uh, to do it. Oh. Yes! Yeah! Would you, um, would you want to do that, Gordon? Yeah? Yeah, I would. So I think we start in the circle? Yeah, yeah. Everyone in a circle. Does anyone have the music? I don't have whatever song they use, but we can play something on my phone. Is that allowed? I mean, apparently none of this is allowed, so we might as well go for it. Okay, I, I think I remember the first step. Hold on, let me start the music. Okay, so it goes like this. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Wait, what are you doing with your arms? Would you put them, like, hook them in your, hook your thumbs in your armpits. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, like, like a, like a turkey. But like yeah. Turkey. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. This is right, right? All right. There you go. <laughs> and then, wait, then the and next the thing neck. is like. But the neck is like, like next level. Yeah. yeah, you gotta work the neck. Oh. Go again, go again. But also just hop. You can like, you hop on one foot and then you hop on the other. I'd forget that though. Yeah. Like, I don't know. That's fine. Like this? <laughs> okay. Oh, I mean. Uh, Rachel, Rachel's right, got it. I yeah, think that's yeah. fine. <laughs> like, I think this music is better. <laughs> yeah. What song is this? This sounds like. Turkey disco. <laughs> yeah, I can't. <laughs> and what's the sound? Gobble, 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 it's gobble, very general. I can't really do it. Yo, I'm pretty yeah. sure that's I, not. You just heard The Thompsons by Andrew Massey, directed by Aaron Arbus. It featured William Jackson Harper as Gordon, Su Jean Kim as Tess. April Mathis as Danny, and Amy Ryan as Rachel. Hi, everybody. It's wonderful to have you all here. And just so listeners don't get confused with all these voices, plus the playwrights and the directors, can you all just say your name and what role you played on this recording of 
the Thompsons. I'm Andrew Massey, and I'm the playwright. I'm Aaron Arbus, and I'm the director. Hey, I'm Will Harper, and I play Gordon. Hi, I'm Amy Ryan, and I play Rachel. April Mathis, I play Danny. Sujin Kim, Tess. Thanks. Andrew Massey, playwright. Thanksgiving with the Thompsons. The teas make for great alliteration, but was there another reason you chose to name this family the Thompsons? Um, no, not in particular. I, I wish I had a better answer. I'm sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm just surprised. Maybe you don't cook, but there's this, like a tremendously famous turkey recipe by Morton Thompson. Oh. It's what everybody says is magical. We'll take you to another world with about 150 different ingredients. But okay, it wasn't from the Thompson turkey. No, maybe somehow that seeped in from the zeitgeist into my head. But <laughs> Yeah, well... So, Andrew, can you talk about this idea of viewing a family from the vantage point of its in-laws? Yeah. So I came to writing this play, well, for a lot of separate reasons, but the big thing that was going on in my life as I was starting to write it was I was getting ready to propose to my girlfriend, who's now my fiance, and in planning and sort of getting my ducks in a row for that, I started thinking more and more about sort of the permanence of family and sort of the impermanence also of the in-law relationship. And so I thought it would be really interesting to approach the story from the in-law side where, you know, until something big happens, you're a permanent member, but there is always sort of that inherent distance in the in-laws. April Mathis's character, Danny asks why there's such an annual exclusion of in-laws from the turkey dance tradition by a family that claims to love them. So what do you make of that in terms of what Andrew just said? I am an in-law myself and have in-laws. And there's something about uh, growing up inside a family as opposed to coming into it as an adult. And it's really hard to uh, compete with those kind of neurological relationships that you have when you grow up in the same household. Like there's just certain brands of humor, like inside jokes that you'll never get. And the dance is kind of externalizing that you fall in love with one side of the person and then it is the thing of you're marrying into the whole family. And there's a push-pull of like, are they weird? Do I want this? But why can't I be in it? Why can't I instantly know all the jokes and know all the moves when I marry into this family? Like that, that tension feels really familiar and alive for me. Right. I remember when my father died, just the realization that my two sisters and my mom, that they were sort of the only people who I had him to share with. I mean, you know, certainly there were other people uh, in his life that loved him, but that family dynamic, it's like a secret. It's like this very particular, unusual, you know, it's like a snowflake. (laughs) And I think the in-laws in this case, they are their own little snowflake in that they are outside of this particular bizarre family. Yeah. Will, your character Gordon says to his fellow in-laws that a divorce from Tyler is essentially a divorce from the Thompsons. And then Tess suggests taking possession of the dance. Any thoughts about that moment? Well, I feel like I've never been married, but I've certainly had some some long relationships. And when those things end, you've put in a lot of work, you put in a lot of time. And, you know, I can't speak for anybody else, but certainly sort of having familiarity with the family of your significant other that takes some real effort. So to like throw it all away feels really awful. You know, it feels like you're not supposed to just lose that entire collection of relationships because of the dissolving of one, but you know, you're not part of the family and it's like, those are the rules. That's just kind of the way it goes. Yeah. It's hard to do. Yeah. I also think that what's beautiful in this play is that they invent their own sort of one-time tradition. It feels a little bit like a ritual to me, the dance at the end. Certainly the the Thompson turkey trot is its own ritual, but this is like Mm. a method of saying goodbye to one another, a kind of a celebration of the relationships that they have that, you know, are in some way dismantling. Yeah. A celebration of in-law shipdom. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> Amy, what piece is the character Rachel's desire to call her mother-in-law mom within this family's puzzle, do you think? I Even though Rachel's on the outside, like the rest of the in-laws, I think she's probably a little, I don't know, less judgmental, a little more liquid in that. I don't think she takes it to heart. Right. Aaron, what drew you to Andrew's play? <laughs> well, I like plays that are truthful <laughs> and I guess funny too. And about the language. I, I love the relationships and I actually don't love a lot of short plays, but I think this is a really moving one. Right. Do any of your families have annual Thanksgiving rituals or shared traditions, weird or otherwise? Well, I'm married to a Frenchman. So Thanksgiving is a weird, like, why do we have that holiday holiday? And so I like to have the meal. Like, I know the history of it is complicated, but, you know, as far as my family goes, there is a damn turkey. And I make broccoli casserole that I got from my aunt, and it's a hit. Everyone loves it. And I need to have that. And there was one Thanksgiving where we just didn't do that. And we went to the movie theater and saw Trolls. And we ate at like a fast food Mm. sit down restaurant. (laughs) And it was the saddest I have been. (laughs) And so I was like, we can't do that ever again. Even though my husband and son did not really care because they were like, Mm, it's just another adventure Thursday. I was like, no, we need to have tofurkey <laughs> or whatever it is, but we have to have broccoli casserole and we need to sit down and eat yeah. that. And when you all share Thanksgiving with your in-laws and vice versa, do you sense ever an insider and slightly outsider vibe? I stay in the kitchen cooking. <laughs> That's the way to avoid it. I'm not an in-law, but I have an extended family and Thanksgiving is sort of our high holy holiday where we have to meet. And we do two meals. We do turkey and we do a Korean meal. So it's a day you train your whole year for <laughs> to consume that much food. <laughs> but um, I think what I've become aware of is that there seem to be so many Venn diagrams going on in the one family unit where you could draw a circle around any random collection of people. And there is something that they're going to share that no one else does. And so there are always moments of feeling outside of something and also lots of moments where you feel inside of something. And I'm surprised at how even now I feel so happy to be on the inside of something and how wistful I am at being on the outside of any one of these given circles. Yeah. I have to say, I thought you were all fantastic. And I want to thank you so much. I hope to see you all again in any which way we can. Thanks to Andrew Massey, who wrote The Thompsons, Aaron Arbus, its director, Amy Ryan, who played Rachel, Sue Jean Kim, who played Tess, April Mathis, who played Danny, and William Jackson Harper, who played Gordon. What a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. You've been listening to Playing On Air, Great American Short Plays with Great American Actors. Associate producer, Michelle O'Brien. Literary Manager, Bonnie Antosh. Literary Assistant, Aditya Pratama. Marketing and Communications Manager, Shelley Horwitz. Theme and Play Music, Tom Cochan. Recording and Sound Design, John Kilgore. Audio Editing, Rachel Kreidberg. Playing on Air is distributed by PRX, Public Radio Exchange. For Playing on Air, I'm your host, Claudia Catania, thanks for listening.